So this video is to show my students for Lab 8 just a couple of things that they need to look at when they go in for Part 3 of the lab. So first of all, just as a quick reminder for how you get to everything, you go into the course content, you go into the Lab 8 folder, and in this particular case I need to get to the worksheet. Now again, when you first open up the worksheet, it's going to open up in the web browser which won't actually let me save anything. So I want to make sure that I open it by first downloading it, and I'm going to download it just to the desktop, which I've already done. And then I'm going to go to that file on the desktop, and I want to specify how I'm going to open it. And I want to open it with the Adobe Acrobat Reader. Now if you've got the same version of Adobe Acrobat Reader that I have, which is the latest one I just downloaded, it should look something like this for you. It might be a little bit different controls depending on what type of computer you're on. And again, when you've got it in this way and you actually start filling in information on here, then you should be able to save it as a document. And when you save it, then you should be able to reopen it and see all your images. I'm not going to go through all of that detail right now because I want to show you something specific that you need to look for and make sure it's working on part three of your lab. Now on part three of your lab here on page number five <coughs> there's some measurements that you need to figure out and these measurements were actually included in a video and I'm going to go ahead and enter one of those measurements here. You'll have to watch the video to get the other measurements. But the thing that I want to show you here is that when you enter that measurement, if you go and look at page 6, that perihelion distance was automatically transferred down here. If you were to change the value here, it's actually going to change it in all three places. So you need to make sure that you get your measurement and that it transfers over here. Now I hadn't hit return yet on this side and that's why it hadn't transferred. If for some reason yours doesn't transfer, the measurement for this perihelion point is what goes into these two ones, just like it shows here on this equation. And the measurement that you're going to put here for the aphelion point is the measurements that go here, just like it shows you in this equation. It's not going to do the calculation for you, so once you have these values in place, you're going to actually have to do the subtraction on top, do the addition on bottom, and then divide. You can't do it all at once unless you've got a scientific calculator and you're using parentheses for the tops and the bottoms separately. Once you get a value here, and this isn't necessarily the correct value, but if I put a value in there, notice it transfers it down here. And then you'll able to do your percent error calculation very much like what we did in the first lab. Now again, this is not the correct <coughs> value and it would give you an incorrect answer. But make sure that if your measurements aren't transferring, if you need any help figuring out where to put the numbers to solve these equations, let me know and I can help you out.